the Wright Air Development Division Human Centrifuge is capable of producing accelerations up to 20 times gravity. Thus, it is a prime research tool in exploring the physiologic stresses and limits of tolerance that man must undergo in the accelerations and decelerations of space flight. Forward, or transverse acceleration, that is, orienting the long body axis 90 degrees to the acceleration vector, is the position in which man's tolerance to high G forces is maximal. The physiologic bases permitting of these high tolerances are incompletely understood, but are known to center around the cardiovascular and pulmonary systems. These cardiovascular parameters have been studied in dogs and in man. These measurements are shown as displayed on an eight-channel oscillographic recorder. The vertical lines represent one-second time intervals. The marker line at the top indicates the exact time of an intravenous injection used to determine cardiac output. The time between this instant and the beginning of the cardiac output curve is the circulation time. That is, the time required for the injection to circulate from its injection site through the heart and lungs and to appear in the arterial circulation detecting device. The cardiac output is determined by the dye dilution principle. In this technique, a rapid injection of a bolus or slug of fluid is given intravenously. In passing through the right side of the heart, lungs, and left side of the heart, it is diluted to an amount commensurate with the volume of blood the heart pumped during that circulation. The curve shown actually represents the rate of change in electrical conductivity of the diluted blood as it passes the two electrodes of the sensing or conductivity cell. The cardiac output is mathematically derived from the area under the curve. The electrocardiogram is analyzed for heart rate, rhythm, and electrical configuration. The blood pressure is measured intraarterially by connecting a femoral artery catheter to a strain gauge pressure transducer. It is calibrated in millimeters of mercury and systolic, diastolic, and mean arterial blood pressures are obtained. The respiratory rate is monitored either with a pneumograph or by means of a calibrated pneumotachygraph, which will also measure tidal volumes. Endocyanine green dye may be used in place of the conductivity solution by substituting a photodensitometer in place of the conductivity cell. This is the injection pump, capable of injecting the conductivity or dye solution at the rate of 20 milliliters per second. Notice the rugged construction of this and subsequent devices made necessary to ensure accuracy at high acceleration. The reservoir is filled, and by means of one-way valve, the injection is delivered and the syringe may be reloaded. Injection and reloading are first checked by this manual switch box, which is replaced by a remote control switch when placed in the centrifuge. This is the injection, and this is the reloading. This injection pump is placed near the subject's head and connected to the venous catheter. The remotely controlled withdrawal syringe is connected by a catheter to a femoral artery with the conductivity cell in series in the blood circuit. By means of this syringe, a steady continuous withdrawal of the arterial blood stream through the conductivity or sensing cell is assured whether the subject is at rest or at G. The sampling syringe is capable of withdrawing arterial blood samples at rest or at high acceleration. The syringes are oiled and heparinized
prior to clamping in the withdrawal mechanism. Comparisons are made between control samples taken at rest and experimental samples taken at G. The blood is analyzed as shown in this chart. After induction of a light plane of anesthesia, two femoral artery catheters and one superior vena cava catheter were inserted prior to placing the subject in the restraint system. The endotracheal tube airway is checked, and here, the electrocardiographic leads are inserted subcutaneously and secured. The blood sampling syringe is inserted and securely clamped in its withdrawing mechanism. are securely bound to their supports. The conductivity cell is inserted in the arterial blood circuit. The blood pressure catheter is connected to its strain gauge, whose reference level is set at the level of the heart, approximately at the mid-chest position. The pneumograph around the subject's chest is connected to its strain gauge. And finally, the injection syringe is placed at the subject's head and connected to its venous catheter. The circuit of blood flow used to determine the cardiac output begins with the rapid venous injection. This a single bolus of injection fluid circulates to the heart and lung, where mixing and dilution take place. It is then ejected by the heart into the arterial system and is withdrawn through the conductivity cell by the withdrawal syringe. Blood flow is begun and control recordings are obtained before the centrifuge starts. a control blood sample is withdrawn. Note that the subject's long body axis is at right angles to gravity, or the inertial vector, which is here parallel to the animal's outstretched foreleg. When the centrifuge is running, the cab will swing out so that this same inertial vector will remain parallel to the outstretched foreleg. That is, the subject will experience forward or transverse acceleration at 90 degrees to the long body axis. Rectal temperature may be monitored with a thermometer. Immediately above the axis of the centrifuge is the control and observation room. All electrical circuits are led in from the centrifuge cab through a series of slip rings and are then amplified and recorded on these instruments. At the left is a closed circuit television monitor of the centrifuge cab and its subject. Just above it is the control panel which governs the remote control syringes and other apparatus. The oscillograph recorder is on the right. At least three control determinations are performed before each acceleration ride. The oscillograph panel on the recorder at the right gives the operator a second-by-second -second survey of the subject. One could just as easily measure venous pressure, pulmonary artery, or heart chamber pressures by placing the catheters in their appropriate positions under fluoroscopic guidance. These oscillograph tracer dots become more meaningful on the developed record. This is a control record taken with the centrifuge standing still. From above downward, we see the marker, the electrocardiogram, the blood pressure tracing, the respiratory rate, and a cardiac output curve. By increasing the paper speed, electrocardiogram and arterial pulse pressure curve 
are more easily analyzed. Having completed satisfactory baseline studies, the subject is then accelerated at a predetermined rate of onset to a plateau of 6, 10, 14, or whatever acceleration has been selected. To obtain a photographic record, a camera was mounted in place of the television monitor. There is little outward change upon the subject. Soft, unsupported structures, such as the lips and cheeks, tend to sag with their increased G load. One may reflect for a moment that at 14 G, the subject is traveling at a linear velocity of about 68 miles per hour. At specified intervals, determinations of cardiac output are performed, while the monitoring of respiration, heart rate, and blood pressures are continuous. Of these oscillographic bouncing balls, the third light from the bottom describes the cardiac output curve. Notice here its rise, peak, and fall, as the cardiac output curve is described. This is the experimental tracing taken while the centrifuge is in motion. Note, as the centrifuge gains velocity, the accelerometer measures the amount of g-force. The particular ride here has a rate of onset of 1 g every 2 seconds with a plateau at 14 G for 10 minutes. After the subject shows signs of stability, a cardiac output determination is performed. While at G, the arterial blood sample is withdrawn and then the centrifuge is stopped. Autopsies are performed whenever animal subjects are sacrificed. After development of the photographic record follows the long but interesting task of analyzing the data.